Hi, I'm David Lee Strasberg, and I'm going to be answering questions from some actors, but I also know that some of you out there have questions. If you have a question, send it in to us, and we'll see if I can answer it in one of the upcoming videos. Thanks. My name is Nate Boyer. I am a second year student here at Strasburg. I'm an actor in West Hollywood, California, uh, Army veteran, Green Beret, and um, I have a question for you, Mr. Strasburg. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a broad question first, it's going to have some follow ons, but in general, I want to talk to you about uh, the idea of over preparation. So, from I guess the 30,000 feet in that term, uh, w whether it's sensory or just method in general, what, what, what do you have to say about, about that kind of stuff? You know, our work's all about integration, right? So, and we're always integrating things that, that seemingly don't go together, right? And I think preparation and spontaneity are, are two of those things that seem to work against each other, but if you're an actor, we want both. So, so we do want preparation, right? We, we want the, the benefits of some experience, some wisdom, uh, and we want spontaneity out of you. So, in a way, with the metaphysics to the side, right? like how is that possible? Can you even do this? Are you really spontaneous if you're really prepared? I think the answer is yes. How? I don't know how, but I know actors do it, right? Like, I watch people do it all the time, right? So, you want to prepare enough that you're actually, your, your preparation creates a space for you where your talent can show up, right? So, more than that, you start to like, you know, you create this space, and if you keep preparing beyond that, you start like growing things into the space. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, right. you, you start to clutter it up. So you, your, your job in preparation is to create this space where your talent can enter, where your own creativity can show up. So yes, you can over-prepare, not because the act of preparation gets overdone, but because you prepare at a certain point, you get it going, and then you start adding start adding things to it and you start kind of deciding, for example, you can do this preparation and it's hard for most people to avoid anticipation. Right. So, yeah, I have a big so, problem with that. <laughs> yeah. So, so for you, this idea of preparation, you think of, well, let me, I don't want to, I don't want to anticipate something prepared. We really prepared, but in the process of preparation, you start going, oh, and then when I walk in, I'll do it like this. And then that'll leave there. Got it. Oh, this is totally working. And then you start to imagine how you're going to do it. Right. So even in your preparation, you're actually leaving yourself. Right. If the preparation were really true, I don't think it, you'd over-prepare. But it's, re it's so hard to stay that pure, right? To stay that clean in your concentration where you don't anticipate. So you also don't want to give yourself too much room. Well, you'll, like if you know you can travel 50 yards straight, give yourself 50 yards of preparation. But you know after that you're going to start to wiggle, right? Do as much as you can control. Yeah, I've noticed for myself, like, when I over-prepare, in, in my mind, this over-preparation is common uh, with just the dialogue itself, memorizing the lines even. Yeah. And, and maybe because, well, a lot of it's probably because I'm still fairly new at this. Uh -huh. um, and and I've, I've found, I haven't really had an issue with over-preparation as far as character work and sensory and stuff like yeah. that. It's been much more um, just the memorization of the scene yeah. and the lines and, and, you know, trying to develop that arc that the scene needs. That's the most treacherous part. You know? Right. Like the part with the lines. Right. Like I'd be much less worried if you were over preparing or you thought you might be over preparing, you're walking a line, over preparing character. Right? Because I think the character, like truth finds its own balance. Like when you find your own authenticity, you find you create a truth, you believe it, it tends to balance itself out, right, in the moment. So you go up and you have a scene part and like you, you find the right relationship when you when you've prepared well. Learning lines though is different. That's a, that is in a way that's usually not the preparation here at the school, right. you know, my dad says, you know, we work on the preparation work, and I say, what have you prepared? I'm not talking about the lines. Right. That is, the, the intellectual act of that, I said your job in preparation is to create this space. Memorizing the lines is literally like putting furniture into that space. You've decided, okay, there's, the couch is going to be over here, and we're going to paint it, it'll be, it'll be orange and then I'll have a matching piece of art on the wall, and then I'm going to do this, and when I turn around, then I'll look in the mirror, because I'll put a mirror there. Like, you've designed the whole room already when you're memorizing your lines. So, so for you, I would... Um, first of all, you got to trust yourself a little bit. You're a smart guy, right? Your... Um, you know, I talk about masks a lot. Your mask is not smart. You don't wear a mask of, like, I'm the smartest guy in the room. You don't, you, you don't uh, market 
intelligence as your calling card, right? So, you know, sincere, you mark it, right? Even based on the military stuff, even, you know, there's, there's some sort of subtle marketing in that, like tough, dependable, all those things you market. You don't market yourself as like, oh, I'm so, I'm so smart, right. right? And this is where sometimes your mask helps, right? Like it actually, if you had that, you'd actually be, you'd have a little more trust in your own intelligence. Right, like you're plenty smart enough to know these lines. I've every time I've worked with you, I've not, I've never seen a problem with you in lines. Right. Yeah. Right? And when you've been a little off, it hasn't thrown you. Like sometimes you do have to take a second to grab the line, but if you stay in character, we don't have a problem with it. Right. It just looks like a pause. Even now, I talk a lot, and sometimes yeah. I pause. Right. So whether I'm pausing, like to figure out what's going on with you. Or I'm pausing because I don't remember the line. It doesn't actually matter. Right. We're trying to, yeah. It's just, it's just a... Articulate correctly in, in your mind what you want to put out. Right. It's the same kind of... Right. Maybe I'm evaluating you. Like, in character, there's lots of reasons people pause. Where I'm, did you get it? Because, you know, the thing is, and I'm, I'm finding out if you get it. When you're in character, you have all the time in the world. Right. Right. And for you, again, you're, you're not... It's not an excuse to say, oh, I don't need to read the lines. I'll read them at the last minute, who cares? I'm not saying that at all. I'm actually just saying I trust you to read the lines and not, like maybe your act of courage, because every, every person has like a, an act of courage in front of them, like something that their work is demanding, that they accomplish, that they, that they surmount, right? And to, to keep growing, to keep right. be more artistic, more creative, and some of that for you, like the, the trusting there, like giving up the safety of knowing the line, knowing it cold. Right? Like, if I know the line, I'm safe. You know, I'm not a slacker. I'm not a wannabe. I'm not pretending to be an actor because I know all my lines. I've, I've, I've prepared it. So you might be looking, like, subtly, you're actually looking for some safety in that. Whereas in other parts of your life, you don't need that. If I told you, all right, we, we got this, this thing, but, you know, this opportunity, but you're going to have to move to New Zealand. We don't really have a place for you to stay yet, but it's a great opportunity. If you were into it, you'd go, like, Sure. Figure it out. I'll figure it out. Yeah, you'll, you'd literally land. You'd be like, I got 12 bucks in my pocket. I got, I got a little bit of my credit card. I'll, I'll meet someone, right? You can see how like easy that would be for you. But not in acting. In acting, all of a sudden, I got I to gotta know my lines. That's like saying, I need a place to stay. I need to know the bus route. I need to know who's picking me up at the airport. I need to know how many bags I'm taking. What's the cost of the ride, of the fare? You're at, what's my hourly rate? Like, you got to have everything... Everything done out. For a lot them. of a lot of veterans would <laughs> would rely on those. Uh, they do putting those pieces together ahead of time. I'm not really like. But not that. you, yeah, right? Only in your acting. In a way, right. only like this yeah. is this is what I say. Courage looks different on everyone. So what your work is asking for is that like, the next piece of courage is that it's like a little bit of trust in in something. By the way, that if you actually from a third person perspective, I go, you're actually really good at. Right. Right. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I think about. Like public speaking. Yeah. I don't ever have a PowerPoint. I don't ever, I tell, when I get, you know, approached about doing speaking engagement yeah. or something, they're, they're, they're asking me, so what do you want to talk about? What are you going to, you know, do you have something prepared? And I'm like, I mean, it's generally prepared. Right. I have, where do you think you want to see this going? And then we right. talk about it and I go up there and it's never scripted. It's always, and the best ones yeah. for me are the ones that are completely organic and right. I, I've let the day and the moment sort of dictate where I'm going yeah. with it. And then. Yeah. It just worked, and that's so. Why wouldn't you put that into your act? Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? But it, because it, of that fear, because of the fear of like, oh, the the you know the the line. It's so important to say these words exactly right. right. You know, and that's it's, right. It's like a it's a habit, <laughs> and that is actually not your, the first job of an actor to say the lines exactly right. I mean, I do. It's part of the job. Right. I want you to. I right. do want you to say the lines. I respect a writer. Writers have a job for a reason because right. they're good at it. Like they actually create not more. All not all of them. <laughs> no, not a reactor, right? Okay. Either not a reactor. Let's be honest. So. You know, I think we're on even footing, at least. Like, right, they right. do their job, you do your job. But your primary, your primary um, contribution is to bring life to the words they've given you. That's the thing they can't do without you. They can do, you know, a lot of people can say the lines. Heck, the, the, the second AD can step in. If they go, Nate's in, the, Nate's in makeup. I just need someone to run it so we can see it for blocking. The second AD can step in and, and block. Right, and say all the right lines, get it perfectly done off right off the script. Right. But he's not the actor they hired. 
right? So the question is, can you bring life to it? And we want, we want you really, really present there. And so this is the thing that's interesting with you is we see the skill in lots of other places. We see your ability to handle, by the way, some, like, some uncertainty, right? You handle really, really well, typically. Right? Your ability in a way to handle, to, to sort of be present in something and speak from the heart, speak truthfully, we see it there. That's why I know it's not that far away for you, for, for you to bring it into your acting, right? Because I've, I've seen the skill exist. We just need to, to, and this is where I would focus your preparation, going back to your first question, right? Your preparation, you want to focus that on enabling those skills to come out when you're acting. That's the, that's the thing. It's not, i got to prepare so I get every line right. i got to prepare so I... No, no. Let me make sure that all my faculties are available to me. That I'm like fully in my body. I'm fully present. Because when you're really present and like integrated in like, you know, mind, body, spirit, right? Imagination. I have no worries about you. So that's what your preparation is there for. Right. Is to create that, that instrument. Right? Which then a director, a writer can do all these, they can change the lines, which they do all the time. You're on TV, they're like, oh, new pages. You know, and you're like, but I just lured these other ones down, right? And they're like, no, we're now on mauve, or we're on, you know, double violet, or something, whatever pages they got, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> color-coded. So, you know, that's, it's there for you. But you just got to know what you want out of preparation. You don't want safety out of preparation. Actually, I don't think any actor... I mean, every actor craves safety and security. Every person craves safety and security. But you don't want to use your preparation for that. You want to use your preparation actually to put you on the edge of give you some uncertainty because that's where your brilliance comes out. That's where your charm.